Welcome to The Art of Dress, and today we're going to profile the Refined Natural. And our Refined Natural style for today is Josephine Scriver, a very beautiful model from Denmark. As always, when we start a style profile, the very first thing to ask is what is the inspiration of the style? So the inspiration of the refined natural style is the autumn. So this is, um, as I've talked about before, the, this is a line style and all the line styles take their inspiration from nature. So we already profiled the spring as an inspiration and the summertime. So what does the autumn mean in terms of inspiration? So you have to imagine yourself going outside and looking at the, the landscape <clears throat> during the fall. And what you're going to see is that one tree has lost its leaves completely. So there's no, if you want to call that ornamentation from the leaves, it doesn't exist. But other trees still have basically all their leaves or some portion of them. And also there's um, kind of a richness of ornamentation because some trees have a color change or plants in general. So this side-to-side -side differentiation with a kind of scattering of ornamentation. The scattering of the ornament is really what is the inspiration for the refined natural. And this is reflected in Josephine's hairstyle because part of her head is braided and the rest is loose. So it's kind of a scattered use of braids in her head. But what does this look like when you're looking at clothing. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do is show this. And here is our first example where if you look at um, the left hand side of the picture, her right shoulder, you can see that there's a bit of an applique there mixed into the texture of the sweater. And then if you go down the side, you see that there's also more applique and it's kind of a, a little bit like a, a fake kind of fabric or something. Maybe it's um, a leather false leather, but anyway, it's a, a distinct textural difference to the sweater itself. The sweater is already textured. So that texture layered on other texture is actually really effective for Josephine because her artistry asks for extra texture and texture is also a big part of every earth style. And the refined natural, as you might guess, is an earth style. So texture is really, really important. So another thing that you can look at for her style that's important is her focal point. And this corset actually has its middle kind of belt right exactly at her focal point, which is the base of her ribs. And another thing to notice is that those little belts in the corset are very tiny, they're very narrow. And that's because this is one of the most narrow or fitted of the styles. And I actually often say that's an alpha style because alpha to me shows like a closing in of energy, the energy comes in and, and that's what happens in a fitted style. It closes in on the body, it connects to the body. And um, another thing that you can see very nicely in this picture is the use of fabric. The lace is uneven, it's not like uh, all over kind of coverage of the underlying fabric. It's scattered. So there's your scattered ornamentation. So it's fulfilling the inspiration. And then another thing that you see in this picture is the silhouette. So the silhouette, as I mentioned, conforms to the body, except that it opens out at the knee. And, um, and that opening out at the knee is um, can either be like a bell bottom, it can be in this case a ruffle, and then the ruffle is repeated at the peplum. And so it gives it a more curvature and also um, it keeps the line medium. <clears throat> so you don't have the extension of line because it's broken by that uh, curved peplum. Another uh, version of the silhouette you can see here is with a long dress where there isn't a ruffle built in, it just opens out at the knee. And again, the use of the, the fabric interspersed with the lace netting is um, very um, intermittent. And so that again is what you're looking for in terms of inspiration. And even the size of the black pieces is quite different. And then um, another thing that's happening here is the lace is used at the opening of the skirt. And so that highlights the side to side differentiation um, that, you're, that 
you're looking for in this style. I want to show you one more example of silhouette and it's this beautiful dress because this dress is doing some very interesting things. Uh, first of all, uh, notice the strength at the shoulder. So now this is not the normal neckline for this style. The normal neckline for the style is a V and I'll show you that in a minute. But when what a V neckline does, if you think about it, is it opens out in an angled line. So the angled line is very strong, but it also draws attention to the shoulder. So here what you see is that there isn't a V neckline drawing attention to the shoulder, but the cut is drawing attention to the shoulder. So another thing that you see here that's interesting is that um, the piecing of fabric in the bodice and then in the sleeve. So the pieced fabrics, or it might be inlay or applique, I'm not sure, but the seam is important between them. And that um, raised seam there is showing, um, the, the slightly accentuated seam there gives it the look of texture because it's like an applique. Fabric on fabric is always like any kind of layering is actually a form of texture. So that strengthens the texture in this dress, not only on the bodice, but also on the sleeve. And the verticality of it is a side to side kind of um, differentiation. And then when you get to the peplum, just notice how the peaks in the front uh, are uneven. So um, if you want to understand side to side, it isn't just the differentiation in the fabric itself, but it can be reflected in the hem. So this is kind of like a hem. It's the hem of the top. And this could also be done on a skirt. But that uneven hemline is a basic form of a side to side differentiation. And it's, um, it's not the way it's, um, differentiation is done in a fabric style, which is a high-low hem, where it differs in the front from the back. No, this is a side-to-side -side differentiation that you see um, in the garment, whether the hem or here, you see in the, in the peplum. And then it's repeated in the collar, which is so cute, the pointy collar. So there you get um, another aspect of the refined natural, which is um, rhythm of ornament or rhythm of element, you could say, design element. And because rhythm is very important to this style. So the sleeve line actually repeats the, the uh, opening out at the knee that we saw, only now it opens out at the elbow, fitted to the elbow and then opening out. And that line is, um, is it's like, a, I guess you would call it a bell sleeve, but it doesn't have to be wide because this is a fitted style. It can just be narrow, but it's a lot more obvious when the fabric is somewhat firm, as you see here. And speaking of fabric, there's another thing that belongs to this style, which is um, one of the principles of style is called fabric harmony. But as a line style, they are, do not conform to fabric harmony. So they can wear unusual combinations of fabrics, such as corduroy and chiffon, or silk and leather, or in this case, lace and denim. And it looks amazing. Now, the line of the sleeve and the line of the dress is also repeated, of course, in the line of the pant, where you have a bell bottom is the most appropriate line, looks amazing. Again, it doesn't have to be a wide bell, and, but this one is showing something else that's really interesting for the style, and that is just notice how the line of the print uh, the print is in a line down her leg. So one side of her leg has the, the sort of motif and the other side is plain. So once again, side to side differentiation. And then that the design of the print is used more extensively in the top of her outfit. So here is another aspect. When your focal point is above the waist, you want your most important design element to also be above the waist because it's harmonious. And, um, and that's what you see here. Oh, and also one more thing you can notice is that the V neckline is um, achieved through the motif in this case. So that's another way of finding that, that V at the top. So the V neckline is, as we have alluded to already a few times, is represented here with um, a couple of very interesting things. So in the first place, you see the side to side differentiation where this um, really cute string of roses is on one side only and it kept it um, ends at the shoulder giving you, um, or it, it tra traverses the shoulder giving you strength at the shoulder, which is what the v-neck line does anyway. But another thing that's happening here is that the roses themselves are done in a way that's very three-dimensional. And that's especially very wonderful for the sculptural because 
this artistry uses three-dimensionality uh, as opposed to flatness, two-dimensionality. It uses that um, sculpted look and it's, and it's called the sculptural. That's one of the aspects. And so you can see that it looks just fantastic on her. And then it's repeated in the, um, in the earring. So you're getting rhythm of ornament. And then the other side is done in a, in, it's not exactly a plain fabric because the stitching adds a little bit of um, texture, but it is plain in terms of no motif. It gives you also the feeling of separates. And separates is uh, the last um, important aspect that you haven't heard about yet. And that's also very wonderful for the refined classic, I mean, refined natural. So let me show you a few more examples of separates for Josephine Scriver. So here you have this really, uh, this is just a darling outfit for a casual outfit. So many things are working here. First of all, what you see is um, at the shoulder, you see the navy sleeve. So one side has a navy sleeve and the other side has a white sleeve, ivory. So that's a side to side differentiation. Then you notice that the sleeve, so it's cut as exactly as if it were a one sleeve outfit. And so you get that angled line, which ref reflects the V-neck line. Um, so it's even st more strengthened by the fact that there actually is a V-neck line going on there. So then what you see is um, you see the repetition. Oh wait, before I go to that, the V of the, or the angled line of the sleeve ends at her focal point, which is the base of the ribs. Then what happens is the skirt itself is also a two-tone. So one side is the starred fabric and the other is basically um, a white fabric, but you're getting the two-tone aspect. And even the, the line of the skirt is angled, so that's kind of uh, the rhythm that's going on with the, um, the V neckline as well. And then you have the rhythm of the white and the, and the navy in the skirt in the star pattern. And then you have the trim also being navy. So a uh, rhythm of ornament in every way. So, so cute and showing separates. Um, and then one more thing is that the, the, because the stars are uh, only used on half of it, you don't have ornamentation everywhere. So you have the scattered look of ornamentation, which is again, the inspiration for the style. So I talked about separates in, in that case, a couple cases now. So here's another example of what Josephine does on her own to achieve separates. So she has this really cute jacket where she has like a beige and a gray sleeve on one side. And then she has pink and light blue, the pink sleeve and the light blue on the other side. So extreme side to side differentiation. She really picks up her focal point with her short top underneath as well as creating separates. So, and then the way the lapels form um, a V neckline, really, really cute. And she has a lot of these jackets. Like it was one of the first things I noticed. It's so cute the way she uh, incorporates the refined natural. But this is one of my favorites of her jackets. And that is because it definitely shows the side to side differentiation, uh, not just in the cut, uh, because it fastens all the way on one side, uh, but also in the texture, because look at the tucks along that one side of the, of the jacket that the other side doesn't have. And those tucks create texture in the leather. So that's amazing. And then she strengthens the V by wearing a chain necklace. Really, really cute. So the use of separates is not necessarily um, needing a plain fabrics because prints can also uh, show separates as you see here. And here she's actually using four different prints because she, um, she's using the lace as a, a form of print. And the, the skirt is the small geometric that's so amazing for her. And the lace adds texture. And then the colors are uh, really reflected top and bottom. And so that really gives rhythm. So it, it's, it's really a cute outfit for her. Another example of the use of print is this amazing dress. One of my favorites. So notice the first, the, the base of the dress is a, a textured fabric and it's textured in a small geometric like diamonds and it's kind of tufts. So it gives you extra texture there. 
And then she has the bodice and the way the fabric is working is one side of the dress has the fabric used in the sort of the ivory or the beige, light beige, and the other side is red. So you have clear differentiation side to side. And also it's scattered. So the print is used only on part of the dress. So now you're getting that scattering of ornament, which is the inspiration of the autumn. Now you come to the belt and the belt is also asymmetric. And so one side has one piece and the other side has two pieces and they're narrow. So that's reflecting the alpha nature of the style. And then you come to the skirt and the skirt is um, three panels instead of two. So now you're also showing kind of separates, not just with the belt, but with the fabric uh, that's used as overlay, um, you're getting the separates look. And then the fact of using an overlay is automatically giving you extra texture from that. So, and then you have the, the bracelets, which are repeating the colors of the design element. And so that's giving you a rhythm of ornament. And then the design element of the top is strengthened by the use of the matching scarf at her neck so that you have the, the strongest design element in the upper part of her gown. Just amazing, so cute. So this interesting dress, it just I wanted to show it to show you that sometimes the print itself can be used in um, for important ways. Um, the print is a small motif that's sort of geometric. So there you go. Uh, what she what she needs in terms of a print, but it's also scattered by its very nature. And so the scattering of ornamentation, the inspiration of the style, is done just by the use of print all by itself. So that's just amazing. And then even though there's a V neckline, it's strengthened by the use of, uh, of an extended shoulder. So you get a really strong silhouette um, for this style and it opens out at the base, um, simulating kind of a bell bottom or a, a flared skirt there. So it's, it's really a very cute dress. Now this is just, I wanted to put this here to show you sig uh, a significant um, demonstration of a side to side differentiation. So as you can see, the V neckline is created, but in a completely different way on one side versus the other. The focal point is there. This is like a, this is like a, um, doing a, a PhD, a dissertation on line, uh, because the, the, um, her focal point is created by where the, um, the top ends at the side. And so that whole area is strengthened by the belt. So the, the, focal point is really right in the middle there. So that's a kind of bracketing that's taking place. And then the one side is um, showing the clear bell bottom line. And then the other side is showing um, just kind of a, a more of a dress look. And there's a pant underneath it that differentiates further by having a slit up the side. And so you really get the idea of the line here and how that's really effective for her. But it's even more so when you see it done in texture. And that's what you see here. So you see a strong V neckline and the jacket is made of a kind of suede. And then it's the, the line of the V is strengthened and also giving side to side by this um, kind of um, placket in the front that's done with fur. And then that's um, repeated. So rhythm of ornament at the cuff, which the cuff then alludes to the opening of the bell sleeve. The focal point is shown by the little insertion of the fabric print at her focal point. And then you see the skirt, which on one side is mini skirt and on the other side is full length. And the fabric is um, used in different ways. It doesn't match side to side there. And then it's also showing um, small motif of uh, geometric. And then um, finally, that print is repeated in the scarf at her neckline. And so that again, strengthens the, the significance of the design aspect of the top of her torso, because that's where her focal point is. Such, such a cute outfit, amazing. Now, um, as a line style, there are many ways to uh, achieve everything, but I pointed out already that asymmetricality 
really belongs to the refined natural more than any other style. And this is an example of extreme asymmetricality with a coat that fastens all the way on the side and the textured um, surface of the fabric is even strengthened as well as the side to side is strengthened by that use of fringe, which um, carefully does not interfere with the clean lines of the line style. And then line side to side, I've mentioned so many times, but I do want to point out that this, this is the style that really owns the one shoulder. Not that other line styles cannot wear one shoulder. Of course they can. But in this case, you can see how the one shoulder really lends itself to the V neckline because it's a repetition of that angled line. And then um, two more things going on in this outfit, which are really cute. The scattered ornamentation along the neckline and then on the sleeve and then picked up in the earring. So you have rhythm of ornament. The sleeve is the bell sleeve. And then one more interesting thing, it's kind of a textury fabric, but the texture of the fabric is um, accentuated by using a kind of a, a, a looped sort of peplum there with a layering of fabric underneath. So using use of layers is always fantastic for the refined natural and for every style, in fact, that has texture in its fabric. So here you see another example of layering. The one shoulder emphasis I've pointed out in a lot of other ways, but I just wanted to show you this ruffle because a ruffled shoulder is um, such a trademark, you could call it, of a refined natural. Anytime you see an asymmetrical ruffle, you really have to think, oh, this is probably refined natural because it really belongs to them, the asymmetrical ruffle. And um, at the one shoulder is really extreme. And then you see the wrap bodice again. I already pointed out that that's, again, very typical refined natural line. And, um, and then you see the short bodice, I mean, the short peplum, again, curved. And then notice how the peplum is showing layering uh, with the little layers of peplum. And so that's a way of bringing texture into this otherwise rather smooth fabric. And then you see the layering again on the bodice at the overlay, and you see layering again with the double ruffle at the sleeve. So it, it really gives you, because it's a double ruffle, it gives you four, at least four layers of ruffle there. Really, really cute for a refined natural. So the last dress I want to show you is my absolute favorite for the, the amazing use of lace. It, it's like a doctoral dissertation on use of lace for the refined natural. So let me start at the shoulder. And first of all, you can see that it's, um, the lace is used on one shoulder. And then when the lace transitions to out of black and white into pink, um, you can see that it forms the V line of the neckline. Amazing. Then the pink is used in kind of a across the body, so it's giving you that wrap idea. Um, now just by the use of the lace, and it's also in a different color. So now what you're forming is the top of the outfit is actually a different color from the lace on the skirt, and so that's like forming separates. The focal point is marked with the belt, and then when, the, then when it's time to open out into the skirt, the lace changes color again. And the lace is most significant in its use right at the, right at the bodice and with, because of the interesting shoulder and because of the, the way the lace is um, forming almost like a, a bow right at her, at her uh, on the bodice. It's so cute. And then one more thing that's happening here is that there's more side to side differentiation because if you look at the sleeve to the right of the picture, you can just see that those are medallions that are on the one sleeve only. So more side to side. But the whole use of the lace is the um, ornamentation that's scattered across the garment. So it again really shows the, um, the entire um, inspiration of scattered ornament that really reflects the autumn uh, in the landscape. So that concludes the Refined Natural. Thank you so much. It's so much fun for me to share with you all of the, the aspects of the style and how it can be reflected in garments or expressed in garments. And if you would like to know more about style, um, I'd like to invite you to my website, theartofdress.com. But you can also learn about your own style if you take the quiz. And, um, and also you can comment to me on the YouTube channel and give me feedback. I'd love to hear it. 
So, or you can subscribe if you like. So thank you very much and see you again. The next one that we'll be doing, we're going to style profile the refined classic. So see you again soon, I hope.